So doing vertical motion under gravity, uh, all this is, is we are throwing an object up in the air and catching it again. So if I've got here, all I'm doing is taking this, throwing it directly up and directly back down. Is that clear? We are not projecting it sideways. That's called projectile motion. Now, before we can do any projectile motion, which is the next lesson, we need to be able to cope with throwing it up and back. And this has already been done from last year. Or oh, sorry, last, well, I say last year, this year, in the preliminary. So this is a revision, but I have to introduce the HSC uh, equations that you have. Right. This is what you should already know about vertical motion. The first thing is that an object is projected up at the base, and we call the initial velocity u. The only difference between this year's stuff and the preliminary, the HSC preliminary, is we now put a little subscript with a Y to show that it's in the Y direction. Because when we're talking about projectile motion tomorrow, we will notice that it's got two motions, an X motion in the horizontal direction as well as a vertical motion. So we are going to be, uh, just be throwing this up there. You don't need to take any of this notes down, please. There's no need to do so, um, because you're going to be using this sheet in a few more moments, and nothing in the blue book is applicable for today. Right, so I will be throwing this object up at UY. Okay, so UY is the initial uh, vertical motion. It starts to go up, but it then starts to slow down, and then it hits the top. Okay? Why does it start to slow down? What's the reason that it's slowing? Right, the weight force. It's been accelerated in which direction? Downward. Okay? Not up. If it's accelerated up, it'll get faster going up. Okay? So it's been accelerated down. There is a force against the motion. So all the way upward, all the way on the way up, there is a value of 9.8 pulling it down in acceleration. So it's accelerating constantly downward. It's been pulled by that force, force of gravity, and in such a way that at the top of the rise, it's been stopped. It's just like you're running sideways and you're on a bungee cord. You know what the bungee cord is? Okay, it's pulling you backward. If I'm, if I'm traveling this direction and the thing is pulling me back, eventually the rubber is going to start to pull once it's taut. And eventually what's going to happen? I'm going to stop. After I've stopped, what will happen to me? The, the, the rubber will start to... Um, pull me back in, by its elasticity, and I go back. This is like a massive big bungee cord, except the bungee cord is the force of gravity pulling you down towards the Earth. Are we okay with that? So the acceleration is given A with a, um, a subscript Y. Why would I have that little Y there? Right, it's the vertical direction. And acceleration is negative. Why is it negative? Good. We are taking what direction is positive? Yeah. Up. And what direction is negative? Down. What do we call setting a up and a down, a positive and a negative direction? What do we call this? Frame of reference. Frame of reference. Good. So the frame of reference, the FOR, is that positive is upward and down is negative. So if I have a a VY as equaling 2.3 meters per second, that's the vertical, that's the velocity in the vertical direction, V standing for velocity, Y in the vertical direction. If it's 2.3, because it's positive 2.3, what can we tell what can you tell me about this object? 
Is it on the way up or on the way down? On the way up, isn't it? Because if you are moving this direction, that the velocity in that direction is pointing upwards, that must be a positive number. On the way down, it's moving towards the centre of the Earth and down is negative, so all the velocities on the way down would be negative. negative. Good. The point down here, down here right at the, at the, at the beginning of the projection um, vertically, we are going to call that the origin. That is zero, zero. So its maximum displacement is up here, and we're going to get a positive number for that. So up, just say this is 100 metres up here, that would be plus 100. Okay. If I get a displacement of minus 100, it must have gone up and then fallen back down past me and must be underneath me. Is that clear? And it's possible to do that if you're standing on the edge of a cliff. Right. So... To summarise, what we already know from this year's work, up is going to be considered positive in this frame of reference. The top of the path, the vertical velocity is zero. Why? Because if you need to go up and then come back down, you must change your direction. A full change, a full reversal of direction requires you to do what? Stop. Exactly right. The motion is symmetrical on the way up as on the way down. Okay, so what goes up must come down and must come down exactly the same way as it goes up. So if this vector here is 2.5, then this vector is minus 2.5. Same speed, just different direction. Are we okay with that? If I threw it up at 10 metres per second, then it must hit the ground at minus 10 metres per second. Okay, what goes up must come down and exactly the same. That rule only works, of course, if we ignore air resistance, which we are going to do. At all times, gravitational acceleration is constant and it's directed downward. We do not consider that we're throwing it up so far that it um, changes from being 9.8. On the surface of the Earth, 9.8 is a great um, approximation to G. It doesn't change. It will start to change only basically about 100 metres, sorry, 100 kilometres above the surface. It becomes 8.7. So unless we're throwing it so high that it goes out of our atmosphere, it's going to stay as 9.8. Are we okay with that? Okay. So these are the three equations of motion that will, you will see on your HSC. Now you can take these three down. Okay. We are familiar with the first one, V equals U plus AT. What is only different about these is what? Subscript. Right, the subscripts. So the subscript just tells you which direction we are talking here. This is saying that the vertical velocity in any mo um, at moment of time is given by the, the initial vertical velocity plus, now I know it's plus here, it's plus AY. Now AY is what value? It's a negative 9.8. So when you put that in there in a few more moments, it will change that plus into a minus but we keep the formula the same. You are going to substitute a negative number in for a y. Do you recognise this one here? v squared equals u squared plus 2as is what we used to have. However, this time here, we've moved that there to an r y. Now, r y in the HSC is r y or delta y are the two things it uses. And the formulas change constantly. R, what does R mean? It's displacement. It's, a set, it's, the, cent, um, it's the way that we use displacement. A positive displacement means that you are above your origin. A negative displacement would be you are below your origin. So that is just your displacement in the y direction. You could use the triangle Y, and I think the last HSC um, formula sheets have used triangle Y. 
or delta y. And that's the same thing, the same thing. It just means a change in position, the displacement change. We recognise this one. R equals ut plus a half at squared. We okay with that? Only difference now is the subscripting. Once again, these all contain a y as negative nine point eight on the surface of this earth, and r y is the displacement in the vertical direction. Positive number it's above your projection point. Negative number below your projection point. T being the time from projection. U y in all cases is how fast you throw it upward. Okay. If u y is a positive number, you are throwing it up. If U y is a negative number, you're slamming it down. You can throw things down. Okay, you don't have to throw everything always up in the air. You can always throw it down. Okay, so if U y is negative, you're actually slamming it. Like the person slamming it, dunking a ball in a um, basketball. Are we okay with those? Okay. Okay. Um, I've just gone through all this. It's just that always 9.8. However, the HSC, because this content is called space, we can be doing this on any planet. And 9.8 can change to any other one. We could give you the radius of the moon and the uh, mass of the moon, and you can work out the new G and use it. The point of projection becomes the origin. Displacement, that should be displacement, not displacement. Displacement below the point of projection is negative and displacement above is positive. And don't forget, at the top of the flight, Vy equals zero because it's going to return. I'm not going to, we don't, you don't need to take that down. That's just a summary of what I just said. Okay. The way that it is always done, it's the UVART system. We are very familiar with UVART. Okay. You use your question, you fill out this form, okay? After you have filled it out, you select the appropriate one. Hopefully you don't have to select this one. Because if you have to select that one and find T, it's a quadratic equation. Okay, and they, they are allowed to ask a quadratic equation because it's done in year 10. Okay. So, here we are, a ball is projected upward with a velocity of 5 metres per second. How long will it take to reach the top of the path? So, let's have a look at our UVART system. Where's my red ball? Okay, projected upward. Always try and give yourself a little um, diagram. So, here's my ball, it's going upward. I'm projecting up at 5 metres per second. Okay. I want to find how long, how long represents time in this case. Okay? Right. So let's do this. Don't forget that when you are putting your U bar in here, you must make sure that you always ask your question is it a positive or is it a negative? UY, the initial vertical projection velocity. How fast is it being thrown up or down? It's been thrown up at five, isn't it? Okay, it's up, so it's going to be a plus five. Vy, at the top of the path, what is the velocity? Zero. All vertical projections stop at the top of their path. Ay, the acceleration in the vertical direction, negative 9.8 is always negative. Ry, do I know the distance to the top of the path? No. You've got a line. Time. Time is the only scalar here. All the others are vectors. Therefore, they have to have a plus or a minus associated with them. Time is always positive. How long is it is what we are wanting. And that's where we put the question mark. Okay. So it's got a, it must contain a T because that's the only ones we want. And it's got to have a U, V, and A in it. So the only one which fits our criteria is that one there. Okay. okay. So popping it in, uh, always write down your formula. V Y equals U Y plus A Y T. Okay. 
So naught equals 5 plus negative 9.8 T. T equals, and we just solve that. We just, if you have heavy difficulty, it's 9.8 T equals 5. T would equal 5 on 9.8. So it's 0.51. 5.1 seconds. Okay. Now, part B says how far will it travel in this time? Okay. How far is length? Okay, so we want a length here. I already know this. I now know that T equals 0.51. I can use that. But in a HSC, would you use a, a value that you have just calculated if you can get away with it? No. You would try to avoid using it. Now, if you did use it and you were wrong in the first one, you will not be penalised for that. That's called carried over error, correct from previous answer. So you can use this value if you need to. However, it probably has been set up for um, an easier formula. I want to find now how far I want to find this one. I want to find how far. The only thing there which is distance is the RY. So I want RY with these three here, and here it is. Now, if you did use the RY equals UT plus a half AT squared using the value that you just got there, it's all self-consistent and it would work. Okay. Right. Using this other one, it's V squared equals U squared plus 2A um, uh, Y. I've got the Y's on everything. VY at the top of the path is what? Zero. Zero. U squared, U is 5, so it's 5 squared, plus 2 times negative 9.8, and RY is what we want to work out. To solve this, I bring the negative, uh, over, um, the negative term on the other side and divide. So RY would equal 5 squared divided by 2 times 9.8, that's 25 divided by approximately 20. So it's going to be one point something. Two eight. Sorry. Minus one point two eight. Why is it minus? No, no, no. Positive. Right, it's positive. So what is it? One point three. One point yeah, one point three meters. We'll all just round to the nearest um, decimal there. If you get an inconsistent answer, like a negative number, if you've got a thing over here, you're trying to square root, and suddenly you've got to square root of a negative number. What is wrong? it would be the fact that one of these values has not been correctly put in. Remember, if it's above, your point of projection is positive. If it is below your point of projection, it must be negative. That's the most common mistake with this one. Because these ones here to have squares in them, you often have to square root to find an answer. You can't square root a negative number. So that's the only reason why that would be a negative number on that square root. Okay. Now, I think that's enough there. I haven't used this one here, um, but you will be able to um, have practice on those ones because it will tell you on the sheet what formulas to use. After a while, it stops dropping off the formulas and um, you can have to choose your own. Okay? It's really not an optional. UVART system is a well um no one way of doing something, please write it down for each one. Don't get into laziness. Okay? I always do not get into laziness. I always write it down because it's just easy to select the formula that you need. Okay? Rightio, so you're going to do worksheet 2A and work your way through it. Um, call me over if you need any help or assistance. Um, after you get to question four, you, um, you're going to start the famous question of the drop. A drop is where you, rather than projecting something, you simply release it. So here it is at a certain distance, and then you just let it go. Okay? And it takes a certain time to go here, straight down. So here's a question that we're going to use to try and work through this. 
An object is just dropped from a tall building, which is 75 meters in height. Don't worry about it. You'll just take it in rather than copying it down because you'll be doing a lot of these in more moments. There's no need to do this. How long will it take to strike the ground? The way that you do this is remember, we always say that the origin is your point of projection. Projection meaning the drop or a push or whatever. So here is our building. Okay? There is your origin. So it's going to hit the ground down here. Here's my ground. What distance is that between the origin and the ground? 75. Okay? So 75 metres there to there. What level is the ground at? It's negative 75. Remember, we are saying that the point of origin is the point where you release it. This is zero, zero. On the y-axis, the ground would be at negative 75. Are we okay with that? And that's the only secret to all of this. If you're dropping it, the ground, or whatever is going to be striking the bottom of the well, which is another common question, is at a negative value because it's underneath you. When you drop something, you always know the following value. Uy is zero because you simply let it go. Are we okay with that? Vy, we not we don't want to, we just want to find how long t time it strikes at the ground, so that's not even needed. Ay is it being pulled up or down? Yeah. So it must be minus 9.8. Ry is what we want to do. Oh, sorry, no, R is needed. Oops, R, we do know what R is. R is negative 75. And T is what we want to find. Are we okay with that? Selecting, which one do we select? That one there. Okay. Now, remember, if you want to find T with this formula, it's quadratic. But what will happen is that UY is? Zero zero and that will get rid of that. Okay? So let's pop everything into our formula. So we've got Ry equals Uyt plus a half Ayt squared. Uy is zero times T is what we're trying to find plus a half negative nine point eight T is what we're trying to find and Ry is negative seventy five. Okay? The mathematics must work. Now, why I'm saying that, I'll come back to it in a few seconds. Following this, that's minus 75 equals negative 4.9 t squared. Dividing both sides by negative 4.9, you get t squared equals something. And then you would square root, giving you t equaling. What's our t value? What is it? Three point nine seconds. Okay. Nearly four seconds later, it strikes the bottom of the building. Okay, the pavement. Had you not remembered that the ground is at negative seventeen um, seventy-five, this is what you would have got: seventy-five equals negative four point nine t squared. You would then say t squared equals 75 on negative 4.9. t squared equals negative, can I get a value on that one? Negative 11, 15, negative 15, point whatever. Point three. Point three. Then you'll try and take a square root, what will happen? Uh, right. So remember, the formulas must work. The, taking the square root here, would automatically give you a maths error on your calculator, therefore indicating that you have made a sign error. Okay? Now, unfortunately, these things don't actually catch themselves in your HSC, so please don't make the sign error in the first place. But if you do get a sign error, you now know why it causes it. Okay? Um, how fast will you travel when it hits the ground? You'll be, in this case, trying to find this one. And you just select another one. I'm not going to go through that because that's just what you're already doing. Okay? Are you okay with how to do a question of four now? Okay, continue on.